Is it feel? the physical feel or is it the response? It's, it's so you have to put one finger up two. and one. Two minimum. No, what I'm oh two up. Two. But this is I'm talking about the the vaginal. Oh, oh you vagin don't you don't do the vaginal. Yes, but it's very difficult. The vagin oh, is more complicated. You don't do the G spot. The so G -spot, you're saying it's the G spot the... doesn't work all the time. One day you return to the warmth of leaving home. One day you return to the warmth, the warmth of leaving. Bonjour, je suis Pierre Woodman, je suis français, j'ai bientôt 45 ans, je suis originaire du centre de la France, euh, j'ai fait beaucoup de petits métiers, je travaille depuis que j'ai 16 ans et aujourd'hui je suis producteur et film réalisateur de X, internationalement connu, euh, par chance peut-être, j'en sais rien, c'était pas prédestiné, en tout cas c'est ce que je suis aujourd'hui. Filmmaker, or you know, it's a little more complicated now because I'm getting more into also distribution and and um, finance. But I guess mainly for the past 20 years, I've been making genre films in an independent way. Concernant Brian, en fait, euh, je suis très heureux d'avoir le rencontré aujourd'hui parce que c'est un personnage qui m'intéresse énormément. D'abord parce que je suis quand même, d'une certaine manière, fan de l'horreur, mais pas du gore. We definitely come from different parts of, shall we say, the entertainment business. So, I've never met him. I've seen some of his movies. It will be interesting. Et puis je crois aussi que tous les deux, on a un point commun, c'est qu'au sein de ce que j'ai vu dans ces films, et qui est évidemment dans les miens, c'est qu'on est des amoureux des femmes, et qu'on doit forcément avoir un débat sur ce sujet, et que ça risque d'intéressant pour vous aussi. Je suis heureux de venir à Prague, parce que c'est la première fois que j'ai été ici. And now I'll go outside for the first time and see Prague. So I'd always wanted to come here, and this will be kind of a different way to do it. <laughs> Donc, ce qui est aussi fantastique ici, c'est que les filles sont parmi les plus belles du monde. C'est une chose que tout le monde sait. Les pays de l'Est sont réputés pour ça. Il y, a, il y a des modèles fantastiques. C'est vrai que là, il y, a, il y a un cœur dans la nation tchèque que, que j'adore. Here you must is. be prepared. <laughs> Happy to get you here, sir. <laughs> Come on, take care. <laughs> nice to meet you. The same for me. It's a big honor to have the chance to be with you today. Well, this is going to be interesting. I'm sure it will be. Uh -huh. So you work here, right? Not only here, of course, but uh, Prague is one of my favorites because the history, because it's very, very beautiful. And for some reason, I had this image that it would be gray and lots of limestone yeah. and kind of dark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, everybody talks about Prague for I will like 20 you. years now, you know. I have some friends here also. Hello. Petra and Eva. Petra, hi. Hi, I'm Brian. But this is a great spot, huh? Yeah. So where are we in uh, We'll in make a tour now. To Maybe we can go on the top. Uh -huh, It would be nicer sure. to see. Uh -huh. Can you follow me? You want? You know, they sent me four movies. Yes. And um, I had actually seen parts of two of them already yeah. at hotels. <laughs> so this must be a big uh, outlet, right? <laughs> 
It's great loot. What beauties. What are you going to do with these bitches? I shall take them to my castle. Go on, get those bitches in the cages. <laughs> What did you do before to start? Um, well, you know, I was a hippie yeah. <laughs> back in the 60s and 70s. I'm a little older than you. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> and so then I never really prepared for life. Yeah. And I, um, I studied art and religion when I was in college and never finished. Ah. So then I became a carpenter. I lived on communes. I became a carpenter. I made a little construction company. I had a, I was a painter. I made a uh, paints, um, uh, artist supply store. I did shows. I invested in a restaurant. Just little, small, what we'd say, itinerant mm -hmm. businesses in a small town in North Carolina. And then somehow I was given a um, a 16 millimeter camera. So I got that and I started shooting and. And I thought, oh, this is a great. Fascinating. Yeah, I, I liked it. And then I said, I'll make a movie. So I gathered up money and looked for a project. And a friend of mine introduced me to Stuart Gordon in Chicago, who was a stage director. And he had the idea of doing Reanimator. I'm fan of Reanimator. Yeah. Okay. I love it. It's a good movie. I mean, we were so lucky. It's a, it's, it is a good movie. I'm yeah. very surprised by the quality for the budget you saved. Can you imagine? Incredible. I mean, especially with all first-time people. You have to give so much credit to Stuart, you know? Please stop! Yes! My love! I must say, Dr. Hill, I'm very disappointed in you. You steal the secret of life and death, and here you are, trysting with the bubble-headed co-ed. You're not even a second-rate scientist. Oh, Mr. West, I'm actually glad to see you. You'll never get credit for my discovery. Who's going to believe a talking head? Get a job in a sideshow. Did you use at this time um, Screaming uh, Mad George? No, no. He came in. I started working with him when I directed my first movie, Society. That's the great thing about movies, I think. I was shocked by Society. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the movie's a little crude, but it's yeah. definitely original. No, but shocked in the way that <laughs> I, ca I cannot imagine how you did it. Inside the story, was this idea of the class Social issue. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's coming from the 60s, because politics used to be fun. So the idea was to make it fun. Yeah, it yeah. Is, I think that society is just for fun. You know? no, but what I, I was very impressive, OK, not by this way, because this is something interesting, but what was um, impressive for me was this big party with this sexual way, which is not exactly sexual, with this monster, it's very... Mm -hmm. Well, very... you know, with horror, it's always tied in with sex. I see you say that you don't like the representation of rape in the regular movies, mm -hmm. but if you see this in the horror movies, it's different. I think that's... I think that's because it's the, not the truth. Yes, I think... Many movies, especially exploitation movies, and I think it, it goes with the erotic stuff too. Part of it is is being able to experience something that is and not have to suffer the consequences. I like the um, I like the the synthetic quality of movies. I like the idea that it isn't real. I was uh, arriving to Paris at 18 and a half and I have no one dollar in my pocket. And the first person I met when I go out of the train station was a very famous porn actor and he was uh, bisexual. And he bring me in his house and he has in mind to, to try yeah, to catch to... me. And that was strange because of course me you not. Were, you were really going into the industry yeah. in the real way. <laughs> uh, not exactly. <laughs> when I find out he want to have sex with me, uh -huh. I was ready to beat him. Because... Well, you only had to say no, right? No, 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 because oh, was he, I very, a... he was pushing it. No, I what? have a problem. When I was seven years old, so one man tried to rape me when uh -huh. I was seven oh, years so old. Oh, so it was... It, so I hate... It's not that he would say no, it's that it was so no, horrible a, for you. Yeah. I have the hate to the yeah. gay at this time. Uh -huh. At this time, because now I've yeah. changed my mind. I'm more cool, uh, because this guy... You've gotten over it, yeah. But at this time, I, I was ready to kill anyone who was gay mm -hmm. in, yeah. near of me. And when I find out that you want to have sex with me, I was ready it to fight. It repulsed you. 
to what? He never talked you into it. No. No, no, okay. no. Not that, that way. No, see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a parallel here. Yeah, you with, will understand. With you and the porn um, industry getting yeah, women yeah. to come in and they I tell you, and I read that you said that you just keep trying and keep trying no 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 this trying. guy bring me in and so I'm saying this guy showed you how to do it finally when he understand my problem he proposed me to to try to be actor and to go on the world of the porn industry as an actor mm -hmm. the five first time I can't it was impossible but I need so much the money that I was trying and so trying and finally I, did, I get it and from that I start to do very good money in a few oh, times. Oh, so you were a porn actor? For six, for five months exactly. Uh -huh. I stay very big friend with this guy, but I leave completely this world. I start to be a cops. And for four years, I was in the world of what is the world of police every day. And uh, I start to be fashion photographer. Uh, there was also a lot of bad side. So much drugs, so much very strange things. And, uh, you mean with the you mean with the in celebrity? The show business, oh, the show with, business. in general. As a fashion, in fashion, fashion there's a lot, yeah, maybe even more than show girl. Now it's finished. You cannot be in fashion model before 16, but uh -huh. at this time you can be fashion model at 12, uh -huh. 12, 14 years old girl coming from East. I see so terrible things that some mm -hmm. people was doing with them that I was, it was disgusting, you know. Mm -hmm. So I start to have also a mind that finally this this world very sweet, very nice that people think it is, was not. And curiously, I start to be more and more near of the porn people again, uh, in restaurant, more and more. I, it was my oxygen box to go to speak with these people, curiously. Mm -hmm. And I like so much the ambience. Mm -hmm. I like it so, it was in 88. I have spoke too much, I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> I mean, you know where we're going? We may, we may have to pee, so... <laughs> can be interesting. Hey, Logan. Listen, I'm just going into this very scary place with a very famous French pornographer with flashlights. Ooh. You just... Interesting. A school-related thing? What's it about? Yes. Well, wow. okay. Okay. Well, then call me when you get off, because I will be through with this then. Okay? Talk to you later. Bye bye. That's great. My son called me, and I could brag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's your son. This is one of them. I've got four kids. Four kids? This is my youngest one. He's 19. 19? Yeah. And the oldest? 27. I just had a grandchild in Shanghai. Yeah? Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Mine will be 25 in October. Yeah. And my daughter, 21 in January. Oh, well, same ages. Yeah. Okay, this is like a... Um, this so, was an insane asylum. I suppose, yes. And they still have all the... I know this kind of cage because when I okay. oh, I, I did cool. a movies in a mad place. Oh yeah. Called Madness. But now the movies I saw of yours that you sent, they didn't have any kind of disturbing elements. Yeah. It was blowjobs, fucking, um, really ass, <laughs> um, and maybe jerking off. But dancing. there was no like. There was no authoritarian, no discipline, no nothing kind of uncomfortable. Or, no, but I, I don't so like. So you don't do that type of story. So you no. couldn't do a story yeah, yeah, with somebody being. In madness a, is a story about a girl who is a serial killer, and finally she became, she escaped from one uh, psychiatric place. So that's why. But in this the story, isn't the kind of movie you're doing now. Yes, right? I you're do. I do always just, a story, or always a serious story. My movies, what I like, I do a very serious story with a script, 
and of course sex. That's what I think are supposed to be all the story, because mm -hmm. in true, in Hollywood or anywhere, they're supposed do you to... Do, un, do you do more disturbing things or more I'm fetishistic I'm things? I'm not a fan of uh, exactly fetish things. I mean to... But I'm just wondering how you can compete with the internet. But I have also some kind of things that we call gonzo, which is a little more strong. It's a... Uh, because you know, there was a, in our business a period after the 90s where people want to see kind of amateur stuff. When the, yeah, the yeah. people just have sex. You have different categories of customer. You have the customer who want to see something serious with a story, and you have customer who go out of the work and want to go fast in a place and, and don't lose time with the comedy parts. Mm -hmm. So those people like the gonzo. You know what? This is probably the cafeteria here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got to go to a scarier oh, place. Now. Where is the scary one? We'll just start. This is the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> Into the Blair Witch Night. I think if we don't take care, we will finish this broadcast with one eye is missing. <laughs> well, I sure know that if this was in Los Angeles, we would have seen a lot of movies shot here already. <laughs> but no spider, no rats, it's not funny. Well, you know, I'm preparing another giant insect movie. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Which yeah you know, I'm making a line of films in Indonesia, yeah. and so I'm going to make a giant... Um, Amphibious scorpion. Ooh. Big scorpion that swims. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Can be, yeah, special. You can be in it. You can come and die. Okay, no problem. Yeah. I will be very happy to be in one of your productions. But our budget's very small. You have to I come, don't care. I don't you have, have money. You have to come on your own. I don't You want... can shoot something there, you know? <laughs> it's interesting, this place, I think. It is. It's, um... Very good. <laughs> this door has no sense, I think. <laughs> Fuck. What is inside? Mm. Oh, we not snow. It's, it's again. Oh, oh, here's the here's the here's the scary thing. The bottom. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just a little too far uh, out in the open. I think if we I think if we stuffed it in a corner somewhere, it might be a little more. Heck. What's up to this one? Somebody's been making a movie here. Yeah, I think yes. For sure someone is coming to shoot already. Because I forget this guy. <laughs> Great. What does that say? Uh, Vita Mimo for us. Uh, out of order, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it stinks, huh? Well, it smells old. Mm. Well, you know, I watched one of these episodes, I won't say which, of <laughs> Into the Night, and, um, and there was an indication by one of the guests that perhaps he had masturbated to, um, to um, horror movies uh -huh. when he was a kid, All right. rather than porn. I can masturbate on some parts of Randy Matto. I know, but you're looking at the girl. Exactly. <laughs> I know, but I'm, so what I'm saying is... Yeah, no, no, but I'm saying that there... It's kind of a cliché. I can't understand it. In general, I think it has to do with that people are, have a very whole sexual feeling mm -hmm. from the time they're babies. And as they get to a certain age, they have a heightened sexual experience. Maybe, yeah. Which, when they're a kid, doesn't really get to orgasm, but it can come, can be a very peak experience. And those, like, if they get molested or something, some mm -hmm. experience that's too much for them. And that experience, when they get that peak sexual experience, I think that whatever happens to be there becomes a trigger for it. And I think your it's whole erotic life, no, I think it's very simple your whole erotic life becomes a series of triggers. Because once the trigger yes. quits working, you create a new one. Okay. If you want to control it, okay, if you want to repress to be, it. To be attracted by, I mean, in terms of 
pure sexuality, you're supposed to be attracted normally with something which is in acquaintance with uh, sexuality. But so if someone starts to be attracted by something which is with death or horror, it's different. Well, it depends on maybe if they had a big expe peak experience watching the movie. Or maybe one. they were watching a movie that had a naked girl in it with, with sex. Well, you know, so yeah, many yeah, of yeah. the slasher movies, they have the sex with the violence. Yeah, and of so course, then of you course. can identify this feeling. Better outside anyway. So, are we not so much dirty? It's okay for your car? I'm not? Yeah, <laughs> I give it you back. Thank you very much. It was an interesting place. <laughs> I thought you would like this kind of place. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> gonna eat. Hi. Hi. I guess we have reservations in somebody's name. Yes. <laughs> we have to put <laughs> Now I now I feel what, like we're making my dinner with Andre. My dinner with Pierre. <laughs> As I tell you I have sex with many many girls in my life. Can you believe, until I was 26 years old, I don't care the blowjob. Until 26, I like it. It was okay. But it was not something fantastic. And until I was 26, you got a good one. And after 428 girls, imagine. Because you have it listed. Uh, yeah. The 428 once, in end of 99, she, she made me one deep throat blowjob so incredible. That but it was, it, was it because of her technique or was of it because of who she was? Of her techniques. She has a technique that so I... So you're really into the physical part of it. Of course, because sex is just technique. Mm -hmm. I, you're not into the emotional part of it. No. Just no, the okay, physical okay, part. Okay, the emotional part. I mean, part. come on, with 3,000 girls, no, no. you can't have an emotional relationship. No, no, I'm almost 3,400 now. Well, <laughs> Only? <laughs> I think I think you may no, be no, no. Ex because, exaggerating the figures. No, 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 no. Because no? I can't. I have books where I write everything. But I'm not every day to look what I do. It's, I'm not silly at this point. So with and also. You're not that crazy. I hope. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. I give you an example. In my casting, I, I spoke with the girls, and I tried to convince them to do a job they don't want to do. Because, for example, when girls sit down in front of me, she said, "I love my boyfriend." I cannot have sex with other men. It's happened every day, almost, I mean, like we can say, the 300 times a year, I listen to these things that she cannot do this job because she's in love. We speak, we speak, we speak. I have some argument to give to the girl. And after one moment, arrives a moment when I say, okay, listen, are you in love with me? No. Do you think you can have orgasm with me? Of course not, I don't love you. Okay, listen, we imagine I don't take off my pants, and I give you the biggest orgasm of your life in less than one minute. Will you change your mind? So of course she smiles. <laughs> of course it's impossible. I said, now listen, I will put two fingers on you on one part of your body and you will have the best orgasm of your life. And after you will do all what I tell to you to do. And it's happened. And where did you put the fingers? In the ass. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and to get this point is complicated. But she has to let you put it in but there. But you know what? She has to let you do that. This is the point. But many times it's curious and myself sometimes I'm surprised. From this point, I get 
in many times. One girl would one hour ago or ten minutes ago or sometimes five hours before say no, no, no. One maybe and finally one yes. And this is how it works. That means what? That means that the, the techniques is superior to the feeling. When well, I want to I wanna have, I want you to present me to a girl that you did that to, to tell me that story, the two tonight. to tell me that story without you coaching her. Okay, I give you one example. Okay. There is one girl now, Kalyan Curtis. That's, a, that's what I want to hear tonight. I give you one big example. First of all, when the people have sex in the movies, they have first regular way in vaginal sex, for example, which is something different. Vaginal sex is the G-spot, it's completely other things. The G-spot is something very, very difficult to get, first of all. It's another nerve. The nerves are not the same place. You have, you have one nerve in epsilon, will do like this, from the clitor, clitoris, to the skin between the, the vagina and the ass. This nerve makes an epsilon, but in fact it's the same nerve. This nerve is the one who also, like the G-spot, will go to the cortex and hypophyse. But the G-spot is one independent nerve, which is on the top of the skin, inside the vagina. So it's another orgasm, it's not the same. You have, a woman has three ways for orgasm. The clitoris, the vagin, and the anal sex. I catch the nerves of the clit, which is the same, like the one of the ass, and I make a correlation between them, and they go up together and bing, come up to the brain. And this technique is the Chinese technique. It's old from more than 2,000 years old, but you never read it anywhere because nobody knows about it. This is my chance. I'm, I'm so lucky that my grandfather learned me to Please, do. please make a movie about it. I will do, maybe, I don't know. But Why are you wasting your time with this other crap? I don't know. You, you, could, you could be famous, you I could be know. respected. This is what everybody said. And say. you could make more money no, but than I, you can make by making a hundred of these. I don't know, but for the moment... These Excaliburs and Bali's. <laughs> The I girl doesn't even come in those movies. But I can tell you it works fantastic because I do this job with successful because of this technique. It's like a drug. Mm -hmm. That if they have that experience... No, because this is like me. I tell you, when I get this first orgasm without to do anything at 26 years old with a girl, it was a shock for me. It was a very big shock. That she was able to do that. Uh-huh. I cannot believe it can be. Were you in love with her then? No, I, but I stay five years with this girl. So for one? No, no, not for one blood job. But she became my girlfriend. I leave my second wife. To but go. that really was what I got you. I leave this girl to go. I leave my was, second wife. She was the Pierre Woodman for you. Exactly. You see? Exactly the point. What's happened to me every every month? That I I disturb the mind of some girls who have a big love story, who are very happy with the husband or the boyfriend. Bingo, I come in the story like a uh, ball in the game. I show something and I disturb the mind. You have many, many possibilities, but for sure, something changes in the mind. This is I what think is. what we need to do here is I think you need to explain the technique clearly. Uh -huh. I think we have to, maybe not this minute. But it's my secret. Well, I think you have to expose the secret uh -huh. at this time. It's my secret. Like, no, but I give you one example. You could make a difference in the world here. No. With this one show, we what? could make, we no. could change the world. No, I give you. If all the, the, if all the men in the world that watch this no. show could give the women this type of work. Unfortunately, not. No. So what you're saying is that the social stigma or the personal stigma of doing sex acts for money in front of the camera is alleviated by your giving her an orgasm. When you give an orgasm, this special orgasm, it then she believes anything you say. No. Then it changes a no, girl we cannot, who wanted to be a fashion model I don't tell it like this. into no. a porno no, no, star. No, no. One of the secrets to break the mind of the girl. Maybe some people will hate me after this, but many people will understand how is my philosophy. When I fight with one girl, she said no, 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 and I said yes, yes, yes. So after one moment when I feel, for example, the girl is like a wall I cannot break, I'm of course upset. And I say, okay, listen, stop, 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 stop. You are someone responsible. Are you or not? Yes. 
Do you think when you take a decision like now, you said to me, you will never do my business, you are someone intelligent who know what she, she do? Yes. Okay, can we do a little test together? So generally, you say, uh, uh, yes. So I say, what is it? Uh, one finger. Okay, look. Now I will come near you. We will see if you are intelligent right now. I will put my finger on your tongue. You will try to turn twice and half, and not three times with your tongue in your mouth or around my finger. Okay? And I can tell you 9.9 .9 times on 10, the girl said, okay. Because she feel, she feel, she's the one who will fuck me up and will be able to do like this. So she boom, 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 and I take off. So when I have finished, I said to the girl, hmm, you're a big fucking debil. Debil? Stupid. Mm -hmm. And she said, why? Because I want just to say thank you. Sorry. I had a little of shit under my nails with the girl just before you, and now you have cleaned up with your tongue. Thank you very much. It's true, you know very well what you do when you say you know what you are doing. So you can imagine, sometimes start to cry. Some people could say you're a bastard. I am a bastard. So the girl breaks, but what I do immediately, of course, if I already put the finger, it was because my hand is clean, I said, no, no, stop. It smells the soap. It's not true. But at this second, you destroy the mind. And I have 10 to 20 kind of game like this. But it's very interesting because you show up to somebody that finally is wrong. Because a normal girl should say, oh, you want to put your finger in my mouth, but your hand is clean or not? This is what she should say. Well, why, why should she even let you put it in her mouth? Why? This why is, do they do that? I don't understand myself. But on 100 girls, you have maybe two or three who said no. Maximum two or three. On 100, you have 95 to 98 who said yes. You're a and Casanova. So, That's all there is no, to it. And this is not to be Casanova. Yeah. This is just to be a technician. It's different. It's, it's just to, to use the weakness of our society with the, the wrong... If our society was good, our society will teach the people first to never suck the finger of somebody you don't know, and the society will explain to the girl and the boy how to make love. If tomorrow the society learns to the child and the teenage how to be in front of each other, my business is finished. Tu veux commencer avec une fille Oui, ça c'est peut-être oh, possible. Je ne te dis pas que c'est pas possible. Mais là, par contre, je vais te faire ta première fois anal. Il faut que je t'apprenne ça parce que sinon, je ne peux pas t'emmener au coin du monde, ou à l'autre bout du monde. J'ai un problème avec toi là-bas sur place. Ah, Nous, on est des professionnels, c'est notre travail. Dommage beautiful, you know? Incroyable. Gitan style. I have a friend. Do you understand English, Rita? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Rita? Mm -hmm. Ok. You make a theory for it because somebody asks you. No. But the reason you're doing it is because you're recreating what you what you experienced when you began. No, because it, which I goes mean, back to what I said no, about that the sexual it, impulse it work, is no. something that we identify no, with because whatever's around no, us when it first millions, happens. No, because there is millions of young boys in the world who do the same, what I did. And this, yeah, is, not, but they, this is not millions of people who became later Pierre Woodman. No, because... Work. Even myself, I did not know I will be a porn director one day. It's happened by, by the life. And you know, when I was in fashion... But as a porn director, that's what you're recreating. No, I don't think right? so. But No, no, it's because I think the life make me growing on that well, way. I'm and, relating and it the, to me. The first time I saw a scary movie that really disturbed me, I'm still trying to recapture that feeling, <laughs> I mean, even today.
Don't you want me? Don't want your body. I know you're making a tremendous amount of money now doing what you're doing. You've got this big company. You're the pillar. You're one of the pillars of this of the industry, right? Maybe you complain because you don't get the respect you should, but I'm sure at the bank you feel better. But I think that maybe you need to take that other step because you can't let Guccione stay with Caligula all the look at it, it's been 30 years yeah but it's, I, I'm not saying put as much day, money like, no, I'm not talking about so much money I'm saying back in the 70s they thought that the change would happen and it didn't yeah but you know it the didn't. problem today today you cannot sell Caligula the same like did Guccione Caligula still sells every day every day as the Virgin Megastore you sell Caligula every as the day Virgin, the Megastore. but it's not a poor movie this is what is terrible they don't, they don't put it in the porn movies, this is what I want to say. If I do one movie tomorrow like Caligula, people will say it's a porn movie today. 30 years ago, it was not a porn movie. Well, remember, if a movie is successful, then it quits being porn. Just like if a horror movie is successful, it's not horror. It's a no, but supernatural thriller. Everybody's waiting for this to be done. But the only one who can do it is somebody who's on the other side of the business, like you. That's the only one who can do it. No, you can't produce. I can't do it. No, I can't mount that. I can't mount a picture like that because the kind of financing I work with in, it's impossible. You see? But it's not, it's not someone simple. who's working where you're, you're making movie now for a million two. Come on. That's true. You could do something. Yeah, but the problem, my name now is big in the porn industry, and people know me as a porn director, and this is like a stamp that I have on my face. I would like not that you imagine, because this is what's happened often, that, that I can be, like you said, a bastard. I, I think I give to the people the possibility, like the life give me the possibility to decide what you want to be and where you want to go. Not everyone has the same strong mind or the same weakness, but everyone is supposed to know what you want to do. This is why this finger story is horrible, and at the same time, I save with this a lot of girls from the next step. Because many girls, once happen this, after they send me thank you, because now for sure I will never do the same mistake again. So I think it's not so bad. But at the moment, of course, it's a very bad thing. But definitely at the end, it comes to be something positive. Mostly. <laughs> Sometimes not, but mostly. What time is it? Oh, I have to bring you. We have to get this dessert pass because I have to bring you in one place where the light will cut. Excuse me. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I think this will be an emblematic discussion of the industry. Most the people imagine but, can see the dog part, but they don't see complete. It. I mean, yeah, the bird, understand. After they will stay with us for one hour. <laughs> I can't say. Oh, you know, I don't have a place to live now. Do you know that? No. In July, I left my apartment in Barcelona of eight years because I'm moving to Jakarta. Yeah. My kids are gone. My wife's in Shanghai with my son. Yeah. And I have no, I'm living in hotels. I have no apartment. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm. So you're a crush out. I don't, know, I don't know what I'm doing. Because I'm doing it. This is a big change for me. Yeah. So I'm starting a business, you know, in, uh -huh. in, J in Jakarta. Yeah, yeah, it's it's called film. Komodo Films. So it's a whole new world. It's the third world. Yeah. Making movies in Bahasa, you know, in Indonesian language. 
so I don't know. I you know, watch it. Tricky. No, no home. I have no home. I'm quite kind of interested in this this challenge in Indonesia. It's very strange because mm -hmm. it's a third world country, and it's um, working with a whole different culture, and with very low budgets, and with um, an industry that is very very undeveloped. So you have to develop it. Mm -hmm. But it's similar to what I did in Spain. But Spain, of course, was much more developed. I love Europe. You know, mm -hmm. it's what I, I love. Spain. I love, but we're so we're so pampered here. <laughs> you know, it's the best. You yeah, know, yeah, and but... it's just, you know, so. No, but they, sometimes you have to go out. Not because you have any you know? it's, it's good. I mean, you can't um, beat Europe for the lifestyle now, the quality of life. This is the time. Mm -hmm. But um, but I think that it's also good to see the East. This is a view from my flat in Paris. Oh, yeah? I have, I have this view on the Eiffel Tower. This is a view... Wow. This... You live in, in luxury. No, it's a nice view, yeah, but it's not. come on. It's my son and my daughter. Mm. Well, there you go. Wow. And but then how was, did you get him into the school? I have never a problem to bring my, my child in school. But no. my daughter, my daughter, of course, when I it start to be on TV, of course, because a daughter, a girl, she has problem. And when I have to go a couple of time to see the director, immediately the director recognize me. Really? Immediately. You're that well known? In France, yes. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I did a couple of broadcasts on TV, you know. So, of course, when I did on TF1, you have uh, 8 million, 10 million people who can see mm -hmm. you. So you can imagine it's going very fast. And uh, some of the broadcasts was not positive at all. And, uh, was not what? On the France 2, uh, they destroyed my my image once. Mm -hmm. I was completely fucked up by the Chanel. Mm -hmm. But to come back to the point, my daughter was so shocked that after that, she said, please, Papa, when you go to the school, don't go out of the car, please, for me. Oh, because she was 16 when it happened, and she cried so much, and, and, everybody and she was very tro you. under trouble with that. People are debiles because they accept the blood, and they don't accept the sex. And finally, it's like... It's like if you, uh, the gore, finally, you was right when you said, at least people know it's not the truth, it's a joke. It's bloody everywhere, but it's a gore thing. People know it's for, for fun, and you are right. It's, it's not something who can, um, who can push someone to kill, I think, because you won't smile in many occasions. Well, you know, that's the difference also. I mean, the, the stuff you've done that I've seen is also... Not real. Okay. Come on, do you think people have sex the way they do in your movies? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think or you're... my friend, yes. You see, I'm... I'm I, well, I, I guess I can't argue with you. I promise because you. Because I, I have to believe you. And but I can see, tell you the but girl... My, but is... my feeling is it's all stylistic. I can tell you the I girl think you your see. movies are about no, as realistic as mine. There's kind of a formal... There's a formal posture. Ah. And it's held for a long time. I'm not saying people can't have sex for 12 hours. You, you know? mean the position I you see position, are wrong? I think the positions are held in a minimalist way. I think it's a very stylized way. No. If somebody's doing it for real, 
they're going to move around more. But I think when you're directing it, you have this idea of what you want to see, and you make them hold it. No, no, they depend. And they hold it, and they hold it, and they hold no, it, no, no, and no. they hold it. No. When I shoot, once you can come on my stage if you want, you will be welcome. You will see. The way I direct the people for this finale is very simple. I put the people in situation. The boy know what I want to see, of course, and what I need to see. They know more or less for how long it should be. And that's it. But after they do what let's, they want. Let, let's put it they this do way. What they want. They Remember they want. in this when the porno started in this well, I'm talking about the modern porno in the 70s. Mm -hmm. People had sex and they just sort of coupled. Exactly. Okay? It's true. And then they started realizing that it wasn't visual. Exactly. They had to get the light in. You couldn't see it. Yes. And then you start getting into these scenes where even in the ones you do, somebody's pulling the hair out of the eyes of the woman. Yes. Of course, it, if somebody's really doing having sex, yes. they're not worried about where their hair is. It's true. They're, because they're, you're worried about, here's the camera, and you're normally going around them. No, no, you're normally it. moving around. And so they're very careful yeah. to keep a distance yes. so that you can see from everywhere. That's not natural. This That's is a true. stylistic choice. And point, it's just as false it's as Mel boy. Gibson whipping no, Jesus no, no. for 10 minutes. But there is stuff that's real. I mean, that's more real with, um, with sex. But the difference is, is that with sex, you don't get the feeling. There doesn't have to be a victim. Mm -hmm. You know, you know it, it, whether it's real or not, there doesn't have to be a victim. But with violence, there's normally a victim. It's true. You know? And so when violence is real, you know. See, I think the genre that we know as horror is really a Catholic tradition. Because the Catholic, it work, if you go to Asia and watch a horror movie, it's not near as much fun. Yeah. Because the Catholic tradition is all about the the redemption through suffering okay and every every action movies like that rambo every action movie the guy is jesus he's just about he suffers he suffers he suffers and finally he's redeemed okay you know but this is the this is the christian message all right but there's also another phenomenon it's a phenomenon of society again when porn start porn was supposed to show what is the real situation of the life of already even today, most of the people in the bed. It's a shame. It means that most of the people have sex for three minutes in missionary position and finish. After arrive some kind of situation like Linda Lovelace in these uh, incredible movies, and, and it was a kind of revolution that there was a deep throat. Immediately, everyone dreamed to get a, deep throat. That was the new fashion of the 75 to 80s. After, at the end of the 80s, start to be the new cherry on the cake, anal sex. Oh, so it was the new cherry on the cake. And after, in the 80s, the sodomy came the double penetration. One girl can have sex with two boys, in the same time, two sex inside. You know, there is a kind of evolution. Today, it's very sad. I have to say, it, even if I'm a porn director, it's very sad that the sex is on the mind of the people, something we have to be systematically on this three way. Uh, Federation, virginal, and anal. If you, if you bring on the market one movie where it's just, for example, vaginal sex, people don't buy it. It's not exciting, they don't care. It's a shame, but it's, lo it's like this. So I'm a little worried of what will be the next step. I already know there is a lot of deviation starting now. Like in what? Urology or these kind of things. What's that, golden showers? Golden shower, water sport, all these kind of things is a new fashion. And I don't do that kind of things. But at least what I think is make me happy that for sure I, I want to believe that until the end of the life of the world, it will be one young boy, one young girl, 18 years old, who will be happy to watch something normal. I hope, I hope this. 
because, for example, my son or my daughter, I see how they are, it's a new generation of young people, and when I speak with them, I feel they are completely normal, you know? So all these kind of new things, deviation, I, I wish it would be just something for a small part of the people of the world, not all of them. I wish. <laughs> You're a mainstream porn guy. <laughs> we can say it like that. <laughs> I hope one day we'll be able to do real mainstream movies. Hey, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> I think we have to leave now. Do you want tomorrow uh, to go to the torture museum? Yeah, yeah. can be good. Sure. What time you would like? Well, I sleep in. Let's see. It's three o'clock. Um, <laughs> we, we could have lunch. Sorry, Anne. Okay. We're, it was a pleasure. It's been a great night. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Take care. Here. Uh -huh. It was a pleasure. Okay. Tomorrow, the torture museum. Yeah. Without these guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, we're quite pleased. It, it was a pleasure. Me too. And I'm sure we'll be seeing each other. So I give you. At least tomorrow. <laughs> Take care. Good night. Good it night. Was fun. You too. Sleep well. <laughs>